So our, next, our first speaker today is uh, Professor Andrew Gasni. Uh, he will be continuing his uh, yesterday's uh, means yesterday had given one talk. Today he is going to talk on new polynomial invariants of uh, virtual knots. Okay, so it seems it's time to start. So good afternoon to everyone, and uh, today I continue the um, uh, series of lectures. And I'm going to talk about a different subject. Uh, it's uh, virtual nodes. And uh, as you can see from the workshop schedule, there will be two talks by Professor Kaufman about the introduction to virtual nodes. And of course, you will know more from his talk. And uh, today I'm going to discuss just um, the, uh, some polynomial invariants which we introduced it recently. And uh, from virtual node theory, I use only basic definition. So I suppose it's understandable. And uh, after my talk, if you listen to uh, talk uh, by Ruth Kaufman, you will know more about virtual nodes and possibly more details. So uh, today I give you just a very brief idea. So again, I thankful to Tata Institute for Hospitality, and I hope we will meet maybe next year in, in Bangalore and continue our discussion. So let me start with the subject, and the talk is based on the following two papers. The first one is a joint with my Indian colleagues, Kiradeep Kaur and Mahendra Pabhagar. So the paper called it uh, two, two variable polynomial invariance of virtual nodes arising from the flat virtual node invariance. It was published in the Journal of Concealed Verifications and also is available in archive. And the second paper is joint with my student Maxim Ivanov. It is uh, available uh, on Journal of Node Theory and Verifications uh, online already. It will be published in the volume this year and the preprint version is also available in archive. So this is ba two basic reference for today's discussions. So today I want to, to follow the following uh, scheme. So firstly, I will recall some definition. And after that, I will introduce a family of uh, polynomials, which call it L polynomials. And uh, uh, after that will be some small application where, why these polynomials are good. We can see the problem related to cosmetic process and change. After that, I, I will modify a little bit this L polynomials to obtain another family, call, uh, call it F polynomials. And else I discuss some application of these polynomials to demonstrate that they can um, uh, distinguish um, nodes which are result of mutation by positive evolution. And finally, I present this uh, the tabulation of these F polynomials just you see how they look and how good they are to distinguish some different uh, virtual nodes. So we will start free of, uh, with diagrams. Hello. Yeah, no question? It's okay. So we, we will follow diagrammical approach and uh, uh, virtual nodes we were introduced by Professor Kaufman in the generalization of classical node theory. And uh, in, in the case of virtual nodes, we can see classical crossings and virtual crossings. And there are a family of Rademeister moves. This family contains classical Rademeister moves presented on the left part of the picture and similar moves, I call it virtual Rademeister moves. So we distinguish classical crossings and virtual crossings in the, in the figure. So usually we have virtual crossing, we put some small circle, it means they have virtual crossing. And uh, you can see the class of virtual diagrams up to this equivalence. So as the equivalence class, we call it a virtual node or virtual link. So we can see everything up to this randomizer moves and we will use these moves to understand something about invariance. And I, our idea is uh, to, to start from some flat virtual nodes, a construct invariance for virtual nodes. And we use the two parameters, two basic ingredients. One of them is the classical crossing sign. Suppose we have a D oriented virtual node diagram, 
and we know by CCD the collection of classical crossings in this diagram. And we consider uh, arcs uh, in the following sense. For us, arc is just from crossing, from classical crossing to uh, uh, another classical crossing. So it's not from underpass to underpass, but just from crossing to crossing. And um, similar to classical knot theory, we can define the sign in, in, in each classical crossing. The sign is plus one or, mi one or minus one according to the following picture. So if you go over the crossing and if you look at uh, underpassing um, uh, ax, so in the passing go from right to left, it means you, your sign is plus. If on the passing go from left to right, you, you suppose your sign is minus. It's standard definition in classical knot theory. So this is the first, thing, first, first parameter, the sign is attached to classical crossing. And also we consider another parameter related to labeling, all in labeling of the, of the diagram. So we, we consider diagram of virtual knot. So we have classical crossings uh, two presented here. And also we have virtual crossing as uh, uh, presented here. And uh, we'll follow the following rule. So we have two incoming, uh, H, H, and two outcoming for each crossing. So if you have uh, uh, in incoming LH, H, if you have A, A on the left and B on the right, then we, we define for outcoming on the left will be B plus one, or on, on the right, A minus one. This is for classical crossings. And this, this labeling doesn't depend on the plus or minus one crossings. It's for any classical crossings, this is the same. So we don't distinguish type of the crossing in classical tense, classical tense. But uh, for virtual crossings, the rule is a different bit. And if you have AB as in common labels, so all common labels are B on the left and A on the right. So you see there are difference between cross, uh, classical case and the virtual case. And uh, nowadays, such labeling also call it the Chang coloring uh, because of Professor Chang from Beijing uh, Normal University. And uh, it was considered in, in various papers. In particular, it was considered in, in one of the papers by, uh, written by Kaufman, and he proved that uh, change coloring always exists. And moreover, he gave the algorithm how you can define this uh, la labeling. I don't want to discuss it, but you can, you, I'll give you some example later. So this is the second ingredient. You can see the labeling and to, uh, to label, to labeling, we can um, uh, correspond something, which call it index. It was introduced by Cheng and Gao, and they call it the uh, index of crossing, and uh, notation is IND. And this index uh, for classical crossing just is the following. You take the sign of this crossing point, this plus one or minus one. And uh, after that, you multiply by A minus B minus one, where A, B, the same as a labeling present this figure three, this incoming left and incoming right labels. So you have a sign and you have index. And uh, look up and introduce the polynomial. He called it a fine index polynomial. It's uh, defined as a sum. So you take sum of all classical crossings of virtual node diagram, and you consider product of signs of the crossing and some uh, another multiplier, which depends on index. So you'll get a polynomial uh, depending on one variable. And uh, Kaufman proved it, this is a virtual uh, not invariant. So we have only two ingredients, one is the sign and another is index. And they calculated for classical crossings of our diagram. And I'm going to, to, to generalize this construction. And uh, I, use, I will use the following definition 
which we introduced by in the pa paper written by Sato and Taniguchi. So they uh, define the following. So let us consider some n uh, integral number which is uh, positive or negative but not zero. And you can see something, we call it n so rise uh, of the diagram. So what we do, you can see if you look at our uh, oriented virtual link diagram, and we just count how many positive positive signs and how many negative signs are related to the index uh, n. So you just uh, consider crossings with index n and take a number of positive signs minus number of negatives. And you will get some family of numbers which depend on n. And just from definition, you can directly see that this uh, JND is exactly the uh, coefficient of um, t degree n in Kaufman affine index polynomial. And we need to a little bit modify it, and uh, we can see that the difference between two uh, uh, rise, so one related to n, another related to minus n. So we define uh, n's uh, d rise of the diagram and denoted by uh, nab nabla j and d is defining just the difference uh, between uh, j and d and g minus n d. And uh, We'll use it as a, another ingredient to construct our polynomial. But firstly, we remark some properties of this device. And uh, first remark, uh, this is a virtual not invariant. That's because you see it's a difference of invariance Gn and G minus Nd. Uh, moreover, you can observe that uh, if you're working with a classical knot, so this is always zero. And moreover, uh, if you have a virtual knot diagram and uh, you, you can consider all uh, crossings and all the indices and you can collect this in some set. So if you take um, and which not, doesn't, doesn't belong to this set, you always get a zero just because you have, don't have corresponding crossings or can you give you some non-trivial non values. And um, uh, I want to remark that uh, this uh, device number is a flat virtual knot invariant. So we can consider virtual knot diagrams and also you can consider flat virtual knot diagram. The difference is just the following. We forget information about over and under crossing in every classical crossings. So in other words, we can see the class of virtual diagrams up to such equivalence when, when we don't distinguish overpassing and underpassing the classical crossing. And uh, similar to uh, virtual knot theory, we can uh, define Rademeister moves corresponding to flat virtual diagrams. This is just uh, we forget information about the crossing in classical crossings. And we say that some, some invariant of virtual node is also invariant of flat virtual node diagram if it's independent of the crossing change operation in classical uh, crossing points. So it is the statement about uh, the risk is the following, it is a flat virtual node invariant. So the aim of my talk is to demonstrate to you how you can use a flat uh, virtual node invariant to construct virtual uh, node invariants. So we go to the next step, just something about properties. So usually if you can see the diagram of, of classical link or virtual link, you can relate with the diagram to, to another one. Uh, for diagram D, you, we, can, we can see the diagram D, D minus, it means you just reverse the uh, uh, orientation. So we always consider oriented virtual node diagrams because so we can change the orientation. So uh, it's diagram will be drawn by di minus. And also for a given diagram D, we consider its mirror image, you know, by D star. 
and means that uh, if you have a diagram, so you just switch all classical crossings to opposite. And behavior of uh, is this invariant? Invariant uh, is very nice. You can describe it in the lemma two. So if you have oriented virtual knot diagram, then uh, if you go if you go to the mirror image, so the invariant will be the same. But if you go to the uh, orientation revising diagram, we just get a minus from the previous uh, value. So the basic properties. Uh, is standard to consider behavior of uh, invariant uh, for such uh, change, in change. So after that, we are ready to define a uh, family of polynomials, which we call, uh, call it L polynomials. So what we do, we do something uh, typical in node theory. So if you have a crossing, we consider some smoothing. And uh, I, so I, I hope you met it many times in classical node theory. If you have classical crossing, a positive or negative, so you can smooth this crossing and you just um, uh, do something like uh, presented in figure four. For any type of classical crossing, depending on rotation of H, you associate uh, some, some local deformation when we don't have a crossing. So it's kind of smoothing a long, a long orientation. This is a, a standard uh, to consider these three uh, di uh, diagrams. Uh, it's uh, give you many interesting scan relations for, for Jones polynomial, for the standard polynomial. But now we are going to use a little bit different smoothing. So it's presented in figure five. So suppose we have two, cl two classical crossings and we use a smoothing, which, which we call it uh, smoothing against the orientation in the following sense. This is something like presented in figure five. So you have uh, under, um, uh, under passing arc and you keep the orientation of this arc, but another orientation is uh, uh, opposite or against. So if you have crossing of the first type or the second type, so positive or negative crossing, so to each of them, you can use the following rule to obtain a, a, a smoothing. So after such a smoothing, you get uh, you, you don't have crossings, but you still have some oriented diagram. And uh, if you uh, if you apply such a smoothing in classical crossings, and you locally we have. Uh, orientation for diagram and uh, we, so we assume that orientation of a new diagram is induced by this local moves. Of course it can be different than the original orientation of the diagram. Okay and uh, since we introduced this smoothing uh, we can apply it for each crossing point and uh, if you have a diagram D a diagram of uh, oriented diagram of virtual node. So we denote by D with uh, low, uh, low index C new diagram which obtain it from D by smoothing it classical crossing C. Smoothing against the orientation as we discussed it in figure five. So we apply a crossing in, in one, we apply a smoothing in one, in one crossing, we obtain a new di diagram, we denote it by DC. And as I mentioned, we consider orientation, which is induced by orientation of the smoothing. Obviously, if you started uh, from a oriented uh, virtual node diagram, we again update the virtual uh, diagram of, uh, uh, of virtual node. And um, uh, we can define the following. So we, we define uh, uh, ends. Uh, L, uh, L, L polynomial of the diagram, it has a parameter n, and depend of two variables, t and L, it's uh, defined as a sum, where I take sum of all classical crossings of the diagram D, and for, uh, for, uh, this is the sum of the following products. So we take the sign of the crossing, and we can take some expression, 
which uh, give, uh, is a, uh, which give us key in degree index of this crossing is the same as the uh, definition of a fine index polynomial. But after that, we use the second variable L and we use the model of uh, degrees of the new diagram, so DC and minus L in degree uh, and series of uh, original diagram D. So uh, there are many ingredients, the original diagram and a uh, new diagram are obtained by smoothing and we take some of all of them. It's look maybe a little bit complicated, but I give example later. And what is interesting with this polynomial, uh, this is a invariant of each or not. So it's stated as a theorem one. And uh, since we define everything in the language of diagrams, so we define it equivalence in the sense of equivalence under the master moves. So to prove the theorem, we need just consider the master moves and to check that our expression, our polynomial, it keeps invariant on the, each of our master moves, each in the sense that we use, we consider only those the master moves where we use classical crossings. And I give you some idea of how to prove it. So suppose we consider the master move one. So you have uh, two possibilities, uh, sorry, four possibilities depending on the uh, type of um, orientations. And uh, for example, okay, okay, let's look at case I. So you have a part of the diagram and after that you apply the master move R1 and you have another locally not diagram. So you, you get new crossing point, which I denote by C prime. And uh, uh, this is a new crossing point. It's a classical crossing. And if it were, if there was a label A on the left in common, so you can see from the figure that you'll get situations and you have a left in common label A and the right in common A minus one. And if you apply smoothing in this crossing, you will get uh, something uh, as was before. So you, so crossing, uh, crossing disappear, but you have diagram uh, the same as the original, but with another, with, with opposite orientation. I suppose you can see from, from the figures. And uh, similar consideration can be done for case uh, two, case three and case four. The difference only orientation of the H and sometimes you, you, you will get the same diagram of the uh, first dimension move and smoothing. Sometimes it's the same, but with the opposite orientation. So if you look at the polynomial, so let it denote by the original diagram and D prime the new diagram obtained after move, uh, 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 after the first dimension move. So you see that the polynomial related to D prime is the sum of the all classical crossings related to the diagram D prime. But uh, what we know about this crossing, there are old crossings from diagram D and just plus one new crossing which appear due to the master moves. So we let's you know this crossing by C prime. So we have such a sum. So the, the first uh, sum around here depending uh, on the uh, the original diagram D and you have a new crossing. So you have a, another one around here. And if you look, uh, you have T in degree N index of C prime. So we, we should uh, calculate index in this C prime, but you can see the, for example, uh, in the first case, I, I put the labels. So you, you have A on the left and A minus one on the right. But our index is just a difference between uh, uh, left and right minus one. So, you, so finally, this index at the point C prime will be zero. So you have a polynomial corresponding to original diagram D plus something. Uh, so you have index of C prime equal to zero. And uh, as we observe it, if you do if you do smoothing in the point C prime, you get the same diagram up, up to orientation. 
but we already discussed behavior of uh, degrees and uh, when we change orientation by model it by model it will be the same so finally we'll get uh, l in degree degrees uh, of uh, diagram d minus l in degree model of uh, degrees of, of the same diagram so we have finally only something which related to the original diagram d so you can see from consideration of the master move that uh, L polynomial is invariant on the such a move. And similar can be done for all other moves. And just, uh, I will just briefly show you some pictures. So what happens with uh, move two, you can, uh, maybe you can uh, look at slides later and uh, consider these details yourself, but considerations are very similar. So you have new two, two new crossings and you have you can see the smoothing in one cross and another crossing. And similar picture if you have different orientation for your angst. And again, again, you observe that uh, in both cases, signs in speed crossing A and crossing B are the same. And also indexes in crossing A and crossing B are the same. So you can use the same calculations. We again obtain that our polynomial is invariant now, now, now uh, invariant under the randomizer move number two. And similar with randomizer move number three. So, again, so generally it looks like this one, but we should check orientation cases. And um, one of these, uh, one of cases is shown in, in uh, this slide. So we have uh, a lo uh, local picture in the in figure. 10 and this is bef before randomizer move and under randomizer move you have figure, figure 11 and you have three crossing points in each case denoted by ABC and uh, starting from diagram D you see a new diagram which, uh, which corresponds to smoothing in point A and point B and point C you'll get such diagrams and similar, after the randomizer move, you again have three crossings, A prime, B prime, and C prime, and you obtain new diagrams, D prime, I, A, A prime, D prime, B prime, and D prime, C prime. And it's easy to see that they look similar to A, D, A, D, B, and D, C. So it's easy to, to check that uh, under, such a, under such transformation, you get the same polynomial. And the last move which you need to check, this semi-virtual move uh, related to two virtual crossings and to one classical crossings. So move is from D to D prime, and we have crossing C and C prime, and we consider for this kind of orientation of H, uh, we consider smoothing in point C and in point C prime. It is easy to observe that these two diagrams are equivalent. And we have here the nice relation to signs in C and C prime is a, are the same, and indices in C and C prime are the same. And so we uh, can conclude that uh, uh, Dewey's numbers are the same, and so polynomials are the same. So this is a scheme of the, so this is for another orientation. And uh, consider this for uh, randomizer moves. So three classical randomizer move and one mixed uh, semi-virtual. We see that uh, polynomial is invariant. So we conclude this is virtual, not invariant. So the difference, we consider not the classical smoothing, but we consider smoothing which, uh, it's, it's in, again orientation smoothing in our sense. And uh, to make situation clear, I would like to present you an example of calculations. Uh, and uh, let's just look at this example. So suppose we start from oriented virtual node diagram D presented in figure 14. And in this figure we have uh, four classical crossings denoted by alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. And uh, we have four virtual crossings, which are denoted by circles. 
and our first step we have oriented diagram so we put orientation in each crossing so after putting orientation from each crossing we can know the the sign plus or minus for each of crossings and then uh, after that we put labels and we can do it uh, for any integers i mean so uh, let's we start from some arc from this arc uh, which, which you have a market direction and uh, we put uh, zero here and after that we use the rule and we put marks uh, on other arcs of our diagram so after that we good uh, we will get um, a good picture uh, we have a virtual node diagram with the labeling and from this label we can get all, all information and uh, just present this information here so for classical crossings we can find signs so for three of them sign is minus and for, for one of them the sign is plus also we can calculate indices for a index in alpha is equal to two index in a beta minus two index in gamma one and the index in delta one we to calculate them by, by the given formula and after that we use the race and the uh, degrees numbers so we will see that the race number uh, is related to n equal one is zero and to n equal two else is zero so for any other n we also here have equal to zero this is for original diagram but what we should should do after that we can see the the new diagrams um, which obtained by smoothing so we have uh, four crossings and we obtain a new diagram for new diagrams in, uh, corresponding to smoothing so diagram d alpha correspond to smoothing in classical crossing alpha so it was here but we use it the smoothing so we use information about um, uh, orientation in original crossings and uh, we put orientation which should be given after the uh, against orientation smoothing so we put labels uh, here and after that we put labels on the remain part of the diagram so uh, orientation is induced by smoothing uh, so no, a new diagram d alpha now has only three classical crossings which denoted still beta gamma and delta and similar for others so d beta is obtained when you smooth in crossing beta d gamma is obtained when you smooth in crossing gamma here and delta d, d delta is a smoothing obtained a diagram obtained by the smoothing in the crossing delta and we induce the orientation for each of the, the diagrams and again according to the definition we should calculate signs and, and indices so it can be done easy from the from the picture and let me give you just the result so results are presented in this table so for diagram d alpha we have three crossings so we calculated signs of these crossings and we calculated indices and you created degrees so this index is not one it is equal to two with index two is equal to one minus one and the same for remaining new di diagram obtained by smoothing and now we just collect all these ingredients to construct a polynomial l and we will get the following if n equal one or if n equal two we get polynomial L1D, which is polynomial with two variables on degree two and uh, on each variable. And uh, for n equal two, we also have a polynomial in two variables, which look like this one. And uh, for all other n, uh, as they observe it, we, the degrees number is equal zero. So our polynomial are just the same as a fine index polynomial introduced by Calhoun, which we know by p so uh, this is, that, that depends on l 
is polynomial just in, in one variable. Of course, so every time when I'm talk, talking about polynomials, I mean polynomials in positive and negative degree similar to Laurent polynomial. So this example of calculation, and uh, we know this is invariant. So what is interesting with this invariant? Uh, if you consider the number of crossings of the of given diagram, so using Kaufman consideration, we can observe that uh, uh, well, absolute values of labels which appear uh, in, in our construction is it most uh, absolute uh, value of uh, crossing number of uh, classical crossings. So we can estimate uh, that if uh, n uh, more than two, two double number, num twice number of uh, uh, the cardinality of uh, set of uh, classical crossings plus one, then all these rounds equal to zero. And it means from, from some n, which we can estimate, our L polynomial will, will be always equal to a fine index polynomial. And uh, moreover, we can think about situation we can see only classical nodes, uh, then um, uh, we, as we observed before, Dewey's number is equal, equal to zero. So L polynomials are the same as uh, uh, Kaufman of high index polynomials. And uh, remark number five, also a very simple remark. If you consider L, L equal one, so you will get that uh, uh, L polynomial is a T and a one, and you can exactly Kaufman a fine index polynomial, so you, you have a fine index polynomial, just a special case of Laurent polynomial. And um, I want to demonstrate that uh, L polynomial is stronger than Kaufman in the following sense. So uh, let us look in figure 16, uh, 16. You have two diagrams of future nodes. And uh, node K is on the left, and its mirror image K star is on the right. And it is known that Kaufman is polynomial for both of them is trivial. But if you calculate L polynomial, you can see these polynomials are non-trivial. And moreover, these two nodes have different L polynomials. So they're both non-trivial and they're different. So this uh, polynomial is stronger than a fine index polynomial. And uh, if you're thinking about reversing orientation and mirror image, you, you will get information about Dewey's numbers you already mentioned. And you see that if you consider the diagram obtained by a mirror image of original one, so the polynomial will ch change the sign and we, we need to replace variable t to t inverse. And if you consider the new diagram which obtained from original one by revising orientation, so it's uh, difference is the following, you should to replace variable t by t inverse. So we can co control behavior on these two operations. And uh, one application which I promised to, to tell you, it's related to cosmetic crossing change. And it's interesting stuff, else in classical uh, not theory. So uh, suppose you have a diagram which presented uh, as a figure 17, and we have a crossing, which call it negative crossing, because we can uh, kill this crossing uh, just applying uh, the master move uh, R1 or uh, after uh, uh, half twisting on one, one part of, of the diagram. So it's, uh, this is a crossing, but it's negative crossing because we can, uh, if, if we change this crossing, we get the same, uh, the same not diagram. And um, the crossing change in the classical knot is called cosmetic, called cosmetic if um, the new diagram obtained by changing the crossing to, to the opposite, it will be equivalent to original diagram. And um, a crossing change, on negative crossing is called a trivial cosmetic, cross, uh, cosmetic crossing change. And uh, 
There is a famous uh, list of problems in low dimensional topology, so called Kirby list. It was formulated, uh, as I remember, in 1978. So in this list, uh, one of problem is the following. Do not trivial cosmetic uh, person change exist? And this question was uh, uh, hardly studied. And uh, for, for we know information about uh, many classes of classical nodes. I'm not going to, want to go to details, but um, for many of them, the, the, there is negative answer on this uh, conjecture. And uh, the same question can be formulated for diagrams of ritual nodes. And uh, we, we change crossing in the classical. Uh, Crossing point and uh, asking what happens with the, our diagrams. We'll get the same diagram, not all different one. And it, this problem was discussed in paper written by uh, Lajny and Kaufman. And they prove it if you have a crossing in, in the diagram with the index equal not zero, then crossing is not cosmetic. cosmetic. And uh, we can a little bit extend this result is in theorem two, and you can prove uh, that uh, uh, virtual node diagram C is not co not uh, cosmetic crossing if uh, index is not equal to zero, or if there exists n such a degrees not equal to plus minus degrees of uh, original diagram. So you can see diagram obtained by smoothing, diagram DC and diagram which was original one. So it gives us a condition when the crossing is not cosmetic. And uh, now let me go to another family of polynomials, call, uh, call it F polynomials. And um, as you will see in figure three a little bit uh, later, L polynomials fails to distinguish some uh, virtual, some pairs of virtual nodes. So we decided to introduce a little bit more correct, modified it, the uh, same family of uh, polynomials, and we call them F polynomials or diagram. And definition of the F polynomials is the following. Again, it depends on N and has two variables T and L. And uh, there are three sum, sums. So the first one just, we consider all classical crossings and consider the sign of crossing at a T in degree index and L in degree uh, degrees of the diagram obtained by smoothing. And after that, we consider set T and D depending of, on the diagram and depending of N. So we consider uh, those Classical crossings, for which we have uh, equality of this of this type. So, if uh, the number of the new diagram is plus minus the number of the original one, and we can see the two cases: if crossing belong to this set T and D, or doesn't belong to this set. So, in first case, you can see the, the following sign of the, of the classical crossing and L in degree the degrees uh, number of new diagram, I mean DC obtained by the smoothing. And if uh, crossing doesn't belong to this set, so we can see the sum of all such element, uh, and we can see the sign of the crossing and L in degree of degrees number of the original diagram. So this is in definition, it depends again on diagram and um, it's question is it is not invariant and yes we can prove by the very similar consideration that this is a virtual not invariant. So now we have two uh, families of polynomials L polynomials and F polynomials and we want to compare them and the lemma fourth they are that if two oriented virtual nodes are distinguished by A polynomials then they are distinguished by F polynomials. And um, the converse property doesn't hold, they will give you example. And example number three, so let's consider two, two virtual uh, nodes presented by their, uh, their diagrams 
on the figure 18. So we have a node k on the left and k prime on the right. You see they look uh, similar, but uh, I suppose you can need to find the differences. We have different crossings in classical points. I mean, different crossings in classical crossing points. And um, if you if you look on uh, n polynomials, so they they are calculated and presented in the, in the table. So n polynomials of these two nodes are the same, but from the same table you can see that f polynomials are different. So this is a two two virtual nodes. It can cannot be distinguished by n polynomial, but can be distinguished by f polynomial. So it means that f polynomials are strong and variant. And uh, also you can use uh, this f polynomial for solving the question about mutation of nodes. And uh, let me recall you just uh, there are some move introduced by John Conway call it mutation. So it came to virtual node theory from classical one and then uh, you, we can see the, the black box with the, the tangle and you have two incoming uh, arc and two outcoming arc and uh, you can see the involution mutations you, so you just uh, you can see the involution of a tangle uh, in, in the middle so uh, involution like present the figure and this causes it, call it positive if uh, orientation of arc is the same so it's called positive involution or uh, and uh, it uh, can be used to obtain new diagram diagram from original one. I don't want to discuss how Conway uses it in this context and how it can be used in other contexts, but okay, it's some move on the set of diagrams. And uh, it's known that uh, affine polynomial fails to identify mutation by positive evolution, but uh, what we know about f polynomials, it can distinguish an infinite number of pairs of virtual nodes, and uh, their positive mm, reflection and evolution mutation sometimes. And I present you this family. So it, it's family uh, is example four. In, uh, let's look at figure four, uh, figure twenty, and uh, you have a family of virtual nodes k n. So n it's just number of classical crossings. So you, you, you have classical crossing A and B and D, and a few crossings from C1 to Cn. So this n it's related to notation of the knot. And on the right, we have a mutant. So, so let's just look at the part of the diagram restricted by the dashed line. We use it uh, positive mutation. We just uh, we apply it for po positive involution and to change this part of the diagram. We obtain the new diagram, which is a mutant of of our one. And depending of uh, n, depending of either an odd or even, we can calculate uh, f polynomials. Of this uh, of these nodes, and they are presented in the table. So if n is odd, so polynomial with index one and with index two are presented here for the node k n, and uh, similar polynomials are presented for mutant of k n, and it's easy to see that polynomials are different. And the, the same done in the case when n is even, so number of crossings here is even. So also polynomials give us a possibility to, to, to distinguish the original node and mutant, and it depends on n, so it can be done for infinite family of uh, nodes and their mutants. And uh, since we have uh, not polyno not polynomials, it's interesting to look how how, how they um, uh, look at, and uh, the tabulation was done 
Uh, I now joined uh, work with uh, Maxim Ivanov. He wrote a computer program which admit used to draw diagrams and calculate F polynomial. And uh, what means tabulated? So we use it a uh, table of virtual node up to four classical crossings. These uh, nodes were enumerated by Barnatan, drawn, drawn by, uh, and his student Green. And you can easily find these uh, diagrams on the home page of Draw Barnatan, University of Toronto. And it's, it contains all virtual nodes uh, with diagrams up to four classical crossings, namely, uh, there are eight non trivial nodes up to three crossings and uh, 108 with four crossings. And just uh, for your convenience, I presented diagrams here. So you see there are standard notation similar to classical nodes. So 2 1 means that you have two classical crossings. Of course, the orientation is important here. So you have orientation. On the diagram, we have two classical crossings and one virtual, and so on. You, you will see that uh, uh, the virtual node number 3.6 is just classical trifoil node with the fixed orientation. And uh, so on, you can look at another diagrams. So they, all of them are presented here. Of course, there are many, but just maybe we'll need to, to look at them later. I presented all of them here. And the last uh, virtual node is just a classical figure eight node. So uh, we calculated F polynomials for all of these tabulated diagrams. And uh, result information is presented as a table. And uh, we indicated groups of uh, virtual nodes with the same polynomials. For example, the first group, 2.1, uh, 3.2, and so on, so on. All of them has a F polynomial with index one equal to this expression, a minus T inverse uh, plus two minus T. And for all N bigger than one, polynomials is the same. So it's a fine index polynomial. And uh, for example, if you take a virtual node, name it 3.1. So you see that uh, there are f uh, f uh, F1 is a polynomial two variables T and L. F2 is the polynomial in T and L. And the third polynomial just in variable T. And uh, so it means that from uh, N equal three, the polynomial stabilize to a fine index polynomial. So, and you see that uh, there, is, there is a big family of nodes, which all of them are non-trivial, uh, this trivial uh, F polynomial. Of course, as, we, as I mentioned before, if you have a classical node, then F polynomial is zero. And in this family, you see a 3.6 is a trifoil, and 4.108 is a figure node, so two classical nodes. Of course, we know that for them it's trivial, but also for many, uh, virtual, non-trivial virtual uh, nodes. So this information about polynomials, all of them are tabulated and you can easily look on these tables. Sometimes uh, the, the, the polynomial stabilize from n equal three, sometimes from n equal four. Like this one. And uh, what I want to, uh, to, to, to remark, the orientation is important because if you change the orientation of the diagram, we discussed that uh, you'll get the same polynomial uh, up to changing T to T inverse. So you, uh, in this table, we presented uh, the polynomial for, for diagram with, C, with fixed orientation. So I, I suppose so you see uh, uh, how, how these polynomials can, can be used and how they look. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Andrew. Uh, 
before uh, completing this uh, talk, uh, let me ask all the participants, do you have any questions? Please uh, post your question. If anyone of you are having any question, please ask. I have one question. Uh, is the list of uh, virtual nodes that you mentioned <coughs> in the table up to four crossings, is that the complete list or uh, some virtual nodes are missing in this one? It means it seems complete list. This is complete list of uh, virtual nodes yes, up yes, to four yes. crossings. Uh, is anyone uh, did for five crossings also some tabulation? For uh, five crossings, for five crossings uh, uh, I, I remember they presented four diagrams. Okay. okay. I, I think you, you can find uh, uh, four diagrams for nodes up to five Classical crossings uh, in the same homepage page will draw one or Okay, okay. So, any questions from the participants, students? So, does this theory extend to virtual links also? So, whatever that uh, theory that we mentioned, that you mentioned, is that extend to virtual links also? This F polynomial and L polynomial, is it possible to talk for virtual links? Sorry, please can you repeat again? So the invariants that we provided, the F polynomials and L polynomials, is it possible to extend it to virtual links also, or it is only for, for virtual links? Yes, I, I suppose we can do it very soon. Hmm. We are working in this direction, and I suppose we can do it. So any other question? Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. It seems there are no other questions. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Andrew.